last episode we rode over Paso Gavia. We finally got into Switzerland through Umbrail Pass. We came again to Italy to ride along Livigno Lake. And we beat it 17 hairpins to Torri di Fraele, where we also rode over Dam there. In this one, we're gonna ride on many great and famous Switzerland passes, and we're still gonna hold us on the border between Italy and Switzerland. So let's get going, guys, because this episode is gonna be totally fulfilled with mind blowing landscapes. My name is Piotr and this is 8th episode of our series From Norway to Alps. This day was our last together as a group of four. Me and Alexandra said goodbye to Jacek and Bartek and they started to ride home. Some of you may know that feeling when you are still on intercom communication that starts to fade away. And after some time there was just silence and finally I said to Alexandra, so we are alone now. It felt weird after almost two weeks of riding together and now that's only us again. But before us was Switzerland, and this time not just 100 km, but almost all day of riding there. Our dream destination is about to come true. Normally we should ride over Gavia Pass at first, but we were there a day before, so we chose to skip it and take the fastest way to our first pass in Switzerland, Pass Sobernina. And this time we didn't have to pay for anything on border Italy-Switzerland like in the last episode. Have you guys been in Switzerland? I heard stories on how everyone drives correctly with speed limits there and while doing so we were overtook by so many cars that later we started to ride with the same speed as everyone else. Was this just our experience or maybe it happened to you too? Our first pass alone with a view on the glacier and we are now almost on 2300 meters above the sea level and it's pretty cold. I think below 15 so we are freezing a little but it's not raining it's like a few droplets from time to time but it's really annoying <laughs> because I for example I like to ride with my windshield uh, open in my uh, helmet and I can't <laughs> problems this pass is a very nice way to get into Switzerland maybe it's not so spectacular as some other Switzerland passes but there are a few moments when it shines a lot What I liked most in Switzerland, I would answer open spaces. We could really feel small here, kinda like in Norway. In Italy, many passes were tight and all mountains around were very near. Here, while riding in the valley, the line of sight was huge. This is our type of landscape. And of course, architecture. Many houses were built in a very decorative manner. We saw something similar in Austria too. That's also very nice bonus to the whole landscape around us. Soon we started to climb up again to our next pass, Fluella Pass. It's also a road that is on a grand tour of Switzerland and if you haven't heard about it, it's more than 1600 km route around the country, with all best roads, viewpoints and tourist attractions. Really recommend you to check it before planning your trip to Switzerland. It's cold! Yes, we are on another pass, it's a Fluella pass in Switzerland. It's uh, 2383 meters above the sea level. We have stickers from here, of course. And of course, there could be no Switzerland without cows and they were in really many places around. On this day I started having problems with my navigation. I didn't check free memory on it before the whole trip and it started to having a big problem with showing the map on the screen. All I could use was only basic map with contours of road. 
Our route was shown on a screen as a green track, so I had to really pay attention to it as it wasn't warning me when to turn. If you guys have also Navigator 5, don't be like me and clear the internal memory. It will save you stress later in such moments. And here I let you admire the best pass we did that day, Julier Pass, which was the first in Switzerland that fully amazed us. This is what I came here for. <laughs> Switzerland, you're doing it good. Beautiful pass, beautiful place, wow. It was getting late when we already rode down from Julier Pass and it was a good time to start riding towards some camping. Also, as you can see, the weather changed a lot and it was getting darker also because of rainy clouds that was coming from everywhere. Okay, we are in a camping. We are very, very near the Switzerland border one more time. We are just in two now, so I and Alexandra. We prefer to take uh, campings and the owner uh, offered us a caravan for 40 euros and the tent cost 25. So we don't need to pack our sitting that morning when they are wet and we can sleep normally and we can do everything <laughs> normally as in normal house just for 40 euros that's so it's perfect deal so we took it mm -hmm. so this is our caravan for tonight with the kitchen and Four beds. Yes. Luxury. Good morning. Uh, we had a crazy night. We were riding two weeks back now and uh, all the time our sleeping bags were in our waterproofed uh, bags and we didn't know that it's a good idea to take them out from time to time because they can get wet. So when uh, yesterday we took them uh, here and we wanted to get to sleep, they were all wet. That was very lucky decision that we took this caravan today because we have this air heater, this warm air is gonna dry the sleeping bags. Right now they are perfect. But today on the sky, there is even not one cloud Cheers and let us eat our breakfast. It's very warm today. Uh, I think it's over 20. And I hope that I solved the problem with my navigation, but uh, I'm not sure about it. Main plan for today was to keep us away from highways in Switzerland, mostly because you need a vignette on them and you buy it once and it's for a whole year. It costs a little over 40 Switzerland francs, so for us it would be stupid to buy just for a few days. And it may seem easy to do it, but my navigation still made problems and part of our route was going along the highway, so we were kinda stressed about it. We are enjoying very much this trip today, because yesterday we were running away from the rain. We really enjoy riding uh, through those small mountain villages because there are some that are like climate there. So uh, there's a big difference between uh, the buildings uh, built down there in the valleys and here in the mountains. But before we got into Switzerland, we climbed up to beautiful border area and really nice pass there, Passo di Spluga. I mentioned before that Julier Pass is a nice way to get into Switzerland, but Passo di Spluga is just wonderful. At this point, we didn't know that it's just a preparation for what we're gonna see later that day. Bought some drinks and cho chocolate and dessert, because uh, we deserve it. 
<laughs> and there is our route so we are going there now to see more magnificent views here in Switzerland here comes Alexandra with tons of money and this one paper costs almost 700 Norwegian corons you know whoa I have never seen and Switzerland franc on my life on my own eyes Wow! And I made a fail turn and we landed on a highway, but it was just few kilometers so nothing happened and soon we took the first possible detour to get out of it. Before us was Passo di San Bernardino, first from our list of most famous passes in Switzerland that we gonna ride on. When I was planning this whole trip I checked them all, but while being here I forgot which one is going to be this most spectacular. That's the big advantage of being first time in the new country. This is St. Bernard's Pass. It's a great pass. It's, it's, beautiful. it's beautiful. Everything is green. Yes, we love it. You will too. <laughs> and there goes our further road. But first we are having a break with coffee, a dessert maybe, and of course sticker. Of course. Of course. We're having Meal of the champions. Yes, instant soup or instant noodles maybe. But it's such circumstances, it tastes a lot better. From our previous stop, it was like 30 seconds of riding. <laughs> and we stopped again. We can't ride here long distances because we need to stop. We need to show you that view. There is something new at every corner and you have no expectations about the places. You just ride and enjoy the moment. And so we did. Oh guys, it's extremely hot now because uh, we are down. We are only 200 meters above the sea level and it's... temperatures were our biggest surprise in Switzerland. Once GS showed 39 degrees and enough to say that we were melting. What also surprised us was the palm trees. We saw them growing like normal trees in people gardens. While living in Norway and riding only there for a few years we were unused to such temperatures and tree types. from Saints Gotthard Pass and I mentioned Grand Tour of Switzerland before. Here was one of those points. It presented La Tremola, road built in 19th century that you can ride on. Saint Gotthard Pass is one from trio of Switzerland's best passes in my opinion. Two others are Furka and Grimsel Pass. And that too we're gonna see now. Riding up on Furka Pass, you will see signs with James Bond Street. It's because this road was used in car chase scene in James Bond Goldfinger movie from 1964 with Sean Connery. There you can also see the famous Belvedere Hotel which stood right beside the glacier. Now to even see the glacier, you need to walk inside the valley there. Amazingly beautiful valley is Furka Pass, and wow, one uh, I don't know what to say. So 
this is the hotel that I tell, told about before and now it's closed because the glacier is almost gone it was built when the glacier was right beside of it so it was something amazing uh, down there but uh, now uh, it's just a hotel in the mountains we are going to see what's left from the glacier that was here and this is all that we can see because we came here too late and the restaurant is uh, closed so we cannot go there to see more we can see the glacier if you haven't met nine ferraris on a road just like that just come to switzerland or it's just us to have that opportunity let me know Furka Pass is definitely most majestic pass we witnessed here. It's kind of the road without close parts, only open spaces and great views on both sides of this road. What I mean by that is for example many passes in Italy began with forest parts or parts without any view at all. Furka is from beginning to the end one long and beautiful scenic experience. We can't go and stop all the time every five minutes because we need to go to the camping. But we can't do this because we want to take pictures and because it's so beautiful around here. Life is difficult. <laughs> you try to... Uh, how to live! How to live! We still had one or two spare days on this trip, so we decided that we really want to take a tour to the glacier. So we drove down with a plan to come back the next day. Before us now was Grimsel Pass. We could see a road that went up in a distance with many hairpins. But Grimsel Pass is not just that, it's totally different than Furka. Mostly because it's full of lakes and dams with power plants. Also mountains here are more sharp. Everything is more tight and closer here, the landscape is more harsh. Furka was mostly greeny, cozy and full of grass meadows. Here it's totally opposite. Our camping was right after getting down from Grimsel Pass. We came pretty late and really tired. This was definitely a beautiful day, most beautiful of the whole trip for sure. But there was still one big surprise for us this evening. We skipped eating dinner before because we checked that few meters from our camping are two nice restaurants, so we thought of eating something good and ending this beautiful day in a very nice way. But after getting to those restaurants, we were informed that serving is closed, so we could only take some beer and a piece of cake. I hope you liked this episode and if yes, please like the video and sub to the channel so we won't miss the next ones in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.